Article 106 of our Constitution says, the cabinet, including the president, shall resign if the government is defeated by the vote of a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly on a vote of confidence. That's directly from our Constitution. It says a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly. Chief Justice Rockton George gave an extensive ruling at which she explained the concept of the majority. But by all calculations, right-thinking Guyanese would know that the majority of 65 is 33. Yet today, we saw Justice Cummings and Justice Gregory ruling to overturn the ruling of the Chief Justice, and they deemed that the majority of 65 is 34. No strange log logic, no mathematics, strange mathematics can change what is in the Constitution. The Constitution says a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly, and there are 65 of them, and therefore the majority has to be 33. This, there was widespread acknowledgement of this in Guyana by President Granger himself, in 2014 by uh, Carl Greenwich in the public domain by Nigel Hughes and many others who were arguing for a vote of no confidence um, in 2014 when they had 33 seats in the National Assembly. Just recently before the passage of the no confidence motion, the government in the, in the form of Nagamutu and Amnali, even on the day of the no confidence vote, um, argued they had the majority to defeat the no confidence vote. That is 33. After the no confidence vote, they accepted the results of it and they said there would be early elections. And now they have had second thoughts and they have gone to the court to challenge this. We believe that this matter will be resolved definitively in the Caribbean Court of Justice. And so we shall ap appeal this ruling almost immediately. The good thing about this ruling is that it allows us to move swiftly to the Caribbean Court of Justice. The, um, now, many people would believe that this is a setback. I, and, and I want to address them directly. We will continue to remain mobilized. We will continue to work every single day to ensure that people across Guyana know of the nature of this government. They have witnessed in the past few weeks when the Chief Justice rule, and there was no stay to that ruling, that the government continued to act with impunity and, and, say, and we're saying that it's business as usual. No doubt they would latch on to this ruling to argue that now they're legal. No doubt they will do that. Although a few weeks ago, when there was another ruling by the Chief Justice which was not stayed, they argued that that ruling did not invalidate the government because the issue had not been de definitively heard at the CCJ. And so we will approach the CCJ. We knew there was a huge hurdle to overcome in the co Court of Appeal. Um, we have witnessed several decisions, of a, particularly where matters of a political nature concern, that the decisions often go against us. Um, the one with the chairman of the GCOM, the unilateral appointment of the chairman of GCOM, contrary to our constitution and 25 years 
of practice that went against us. It's before the CCJ that will be heard shortly. Secondly, um, this case, most Guyanese, um, if, if this had to be overturned, I thought uh, there would have been some other technicality maybe on the issue of dual citizenship. But we made it clear that 165.2 of the Constitution would validate any, any vote that a dual citizen may make in the Parliament. I never thought that this issue of 34, 31, because it is needed now um, to pass uh, a no confidence vote. It's probably the weakest argument, yet, um, yet there is a ruling of two to one in this nature, and I, we have to challenge it there. So I want to say to all Guyanese, we have made it clear, we will be respectful of the ruling of the court. We've always been respectful of rulings of the court. We will, one of the reasons we joined the CCJ is to have this external review. And we hope that we will be able to convince the CCJ, and we think we can, that the no confidence motion has been validly passed and that this strange importation into our constitution of a concept of simple versus absolute majority, when the constitution says the majority of all elected members, that that is not enough or this weird interpretation is not enough to invalidate the, the vote. So we will continue to argue for GCOM to be prepared for early elections because there is a great possibility that this, ad, this adverse ruling could be overturned at the CCJ. And if it's overturned here and they're not prepared, then that would mean further delays in, the ele in, in um, Guyana in con conducting elections. So we'll be pressing for GCOM to continue its preparation for early elections. If they prevail there, then simply don't have to go to elections. But if, the, if we do prevail and we think there's a great chance of that happening, then the, the GCOM must be ready for early elections soon, very soon. Um, we will continue to work across Ghana. I want to thank all of those people who came out today. I think the government got a hint of what is is confronting it. They have helped to mobilize support right across the country for, for the PPP because people have now been witnessing the true nature of this government, that it is um, a government that will hang on to power at all costs, um, including making excuses about elections or trying to drag the matter out in court. Um, and therefore, the struggle has to be intense to dislodge them. They can't hide forever. Given their track record of mismanagement, the large-scale corruption, the hopelessness in the country, the loss of jobs, the loss of welfare, etc., the, the outcome is inevitable, and they have seen this. So the elections shall come whenever they come, and once we work hard and we stay mobilized, I don't want a single member of the PVP to be, or our supporters to be demoralized or to stop working. We have to keep working very hard on the ground to make sure that whenever the elections come, the outcome is inevitable. And therefore, I urge all of you not to be dejected here. As I said before, we will appeal this matter we can now move swiftly to the CCJ. They would have delayed it for a very long time in the future, another month or two. Now we can appeal almost instantaneously to have the matter resolved there. So keep mobilized, keep working online, um, keep working in the communities, keep sharing the flyers, keep reaching out to people, uh, keep going into the communities where uh, we are not strong, have no strongholds because people need our support and guidance there too. The kids in South Georgetown, if you talk to them, they'd have no jobs whatsoever. They have absolutely no job. They too would be demoralized um, to some extent because many of them said to me, 
we want early elections. We can't wait to get rid of this government. If you go to Linden, you'll hear the same thing. Or in New Amsterdam or any part of the country, even including in the APNU strongholds. So we have to keep working there. We have to keep talking about what we're, we stand for, which is bringing people together, mobilizing them, looking for, to the future. We would still examine all of the illegalities they have done in the last three months whenever the elections are held and whenever the PPP prevails. We know that there are tons of illegalities that were done in breach of the Constitution, in breach of the procurement laws. They've given out contracts to their friends and family, violating all the laws, large-scale transfer of lands, etc. All of those would be investigated. They can, they can hang around for a while, but they can't hide forever. And no matter this, the, the outreach that they are doing now, you see them busy every day in every community, they are still worried because they have witnessed that on the ground people just are fed up with them. So don't be um, demoralized by this. We always knew there was this hurdle. We have witnessed it in the past, this, the hurdle in elements or parts of our court system, but that's one of the reasons why we have an external review now and we move swiftly in, in, to, to address that. Thank you.